Here we have a soldering station by I2C. This was mailed over to us so we can sample it. I2C initially wanted us to review this product. I told I2C that we do not review products for anyone. The only time we review a product is if we carry it and sell it on our e-commerce website. So I2C agreed. They mailed the station over along with three handles, big one, medium one, and uh, micro one. And they also mailed seven different tips. Three tips for the big one, for the big handle, two medium tips for the medium handle, and two micro tips for the micro handle. They said to try it out in hopes that we can do business and carry this and sell it on our e-commerce website. I want to go over what I like and what I do not like about this station. I tried it all day yesterday and we had few people in the comments in yesterday's video. They said, did you get a JBC soldering station? This is not a JBC soldering station, although it looks like it. It looks like JBC from far, but it's I2C. Now, let's go ahead and try the big handle and see how it works. And I'll tell you what I like and what I do not like about the station. I already mentioned, I like the way it looks and feels. I like the feel of the handles. I like the way the tips look. They look like they are precise and well made, but we care about the performance more than the look. Well, let's go over all three tips under the microscope so I can show you how they look like. We have a knife tip and that's a big knife tip because we're going to be using the big handle now. I have not used that tip yet. I already tried that tip and you can tell. We have a conical tip and we also have the bent tip. Those tips, they look good. So how do we insert the tip? If the machine is on, I cannot go like this because it's going to burn my hand. It quickly goes from zero to 350 in maybe three seconds. So what we do is I can put the tip here. Let me turn the station on and we just press down on the tip. Okay. The tip is in. The station is going up 350, 400, 450. 450, it took a few seconds, just like my Weller. My Weller can go up from zero to 450 in three seconds. Okay. And this one looks like it's very close. Okay. It went up quick. We have 450 degrees on the tip here. Let's go under the microscope and see how that tip works. Right now I have this Mercedes Benz motherboard. Let's add some flux to the board and maybe we're going to try to add a solder blob onto that component. But before we add the blob here onto that component, let's see if solder will stick on the tip. It should. That's what I look for. Is this on? Right now I have a message. It says open. I do not know what that means. I did see it go up to 450, but now I have an exclamation mark. Maybe the tip is not in all the way. The tip is in. It's not working. I tried this before, but right now it's not working. Let me try to take the tip out and maybe put the tip back in again. Retool. I do not know what retool means. And I have an exclamation mark. The tip is not working. Okay. Let's remove the tip and we're going to try another tip. I did try it yesterday. It worked, but today it's not working. Let's try this one. Okay, unless I'm doing something wrong. I mean, it's not rocket science to change tips. We just put the tip in and take it out. If it's rocket science to change tips on this handle, then the machine is not good. Take out the tip and put the tip back in. Same thing, I'm getting a message that says retool and exclamation mark. Let me turn the machine off and turn it back on again. Right now, it's working. Temperature is up to 330, 350, 390, 400, 450, and then retool. It goes back to retool. So right now, I cannot even demonstrate how that tip works. Oh, it's back on again, 450. Okay, so now it's working. 
What happened before, I do not know. I did experience that message on the medium tips. That to me is a turnoff. I would not sell a machine that gives me intermittent messages. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work. I would not carry such a station. Right now, I'm still communicating with the maker, with I2C, and I told them about my concerns. Once they address all my concerns, then we can carry their item and sell it on our site. But I'm not going to sell you something that I would not use myself or something that's going to give you a hard time. And that's why every product that we sell on our site, I personally use it, like the grinding pen or tweezers or the blades or uh, the clipper or the shear that we used yesterday. All the stuff that we sell, we sell them because I use them and I know that they are good. So this one here, we're not going to carry it until they address all our concerns and they fix whatever issues are wrong with this machine. So right now the handle is working. Let's go under the microscope and let's take a look. The first thing I want to do is test the tip. We want to make sure that solder sticks onto the tip. Okay, now look at this. Solder is not sticking onto the tip. And that's a big problem. That's a brand new tip. I only used it for one day. If you cannot get solder to stick onto the tip, it's going to give you a very hard time soldering. Let me demonstrate my water tip. And look at that. I'm able to wet the tip. Solder sticks onto the tip. And look at this. The tip is not working again. We have the explanation mark on the screen. And I'm not able to use that tip again. That's bad. That's very bad. Now, my other concern is, in order to remove the handle or the tip, we have to stick the tip here. And then we have to pull upwards on the tip, like this, right? But this piece is plastic. This piece is plastic. Yesterday, I was removing the tip, and that tip got stuck inside because the plastic melted on the inside, and the tip got stuck to the plastic on the inside. Why would this piece be plastic knowing that the tip reaches 450 degrees Celsius? The inside of this groove is all burned up because of this. So like I said, yesterday the tip got stuck to the plastic and you already see a burn mark on the side here, right here. This piece is burned up. The thing was smoking yesterday because the tip melted the plastic inside. So that's a no-no. That's a design flow. I told I2C about it, and they said they worked on a stand, another stand, not this one, where it's well made and we're not going to have that issue. But that's not my only concern. As you can see, right now, even if I stick the tip onto the handle, right now the machine was able to detect the tip, but it's intermittent. Sometimes it's able to detect it, and sometimes it's not able to detect it. Let's remove Let's remove that tip and do this one. And this one is not being recognized. The second tip, now it's recognized. Okay. Right now we have exclamation mark. And the tip is only two days old or one day old. I used it yesterday and that's it. And look at this. Look at the initial tip that we changed. It's all black now because it melted the plastic inside. Look at this. That's not acceptable. You know what? I'm not going to use this handle right now. Let's switch over to the other handle. I do not want to spend a lot of time just talking about one handle. You did see the design flow, the plastic on the soldering station. And the station, sometimes it can detect the tip and sometimes it cannot. And the tip does not hold solder. So now I have the micro handle and we're gonna use one of the two micro tips that they sent over. Let's try tip number one. We're gonna plug it in. Okay. Right now, it went up to 450 degrees Celsius. That's good. Let's go under the microscope and take a look at this tip. And I love this little feature here. It's like a silicon door with the steel wool inside so we can clean the tip. Okay, 
and this does not burn. Very nice. Let's take a look at the tip. And this one is the micro tip. I mean, I love how precise this tip is. But again, it's not only about the looks. We care about the performance. The tip right now looks perfect to me. I love the cutout of the tip. I love how precise this tip is. And let's try to stick solder onto the tip. Okay. To be fair, let's add some flux here. I just want to try it with flux because flux does help with the flow of solder. And we are able to add the tip, okay? Maybe we could have done that on the big tip, but I was able to wet my weller tip without having to add flux. Okay, let's go here on this Mercedes-Benz fab. And let's add some flux. And I'm going to try to tin or retin those pads. Okay, and beautiful. I love it. I love the micro pen. Looks good. Okay, no issues at all. And amazing. The performance on that tip is amazing. I love it. Right now we need more flux here so we do not get any bridges. The performance on this tip is solid. Look at this. Wow. Very nice. Very nice. It performed just like my Weller machine. I love that tip. And if we try to melt. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Enough heat. I mean, I only heated one side of the component. And I was able to remove the whole component because... There's enough heat on that tip, 450 degrees. So it's a pass. That tip is a pass. I love it. Let's remove the tip. And it's really hard to use this. When removing the tip, it's really hard to use this. The tip fell down here. But let's keep it on the side. I want to try the other tip. We're going to press it down, and the machine did not see it. Okay, now it's working. 450 degrees Celsius. Let's go under the microscope and take a look at this bent conical tip. And this one looks so fine, so fine. Fine, in my experience, is not very useful. The bigger the tip, the more heat transfer. Right now, because of how fine the tip is, we're not going to get a lot of heat transfer. This is useful if you are dealing with size 1005 SMD components or possibly 201 size SMD components. But if you try to solder an HDMI port with this tip, it's not going to work. It's going to give you a very hard time. We are working with a two layer board here. So it may work on this board, but not on boards that are seven layers, 10 layers, 12 layers. Let's add some flux and try the tip here. You see, it's going to be difficult to melt solder here because the tip is small. The tip is not meant for that purpose. Right now I was able to melt it because this is a two layer board and I have leaded solder here and not unleaded. So I do love the precision of the tip and I give it a pass. I give it a pass. Let's try to remove that tip. And again, I'm removing that tip and it just flew backwards. One of them flew to the front and the other one went to the back. Now to remove that handle, we have to press on that latch and take it out like this. Let's try the medium one, which is this one here. And see how it works. Medium handle, I have two tips here that they sent over to us. Let's take a look at the tips under the microscope. We have this one, a bigger bent tip, and we have a knife tip. Okay, luckily the machine is working and we are up to 450 degrees. Let's go under the microscope. 
let's add flux here and let's try to thin those pads it did an excellent job and I was able to desolder that button with just soldering iron. That's amazing. Let's solder it back. I mean, to be honest, I love the heat properties of this machine. The machine is supplying a lot of heat onto the tip. The tip did an amazing job and I love it. I love it. I would use that tip. And Let's go for the other tip. And the other tip is a knife tip. Okay, and it's not able to see the tip. These are some of my concerns. The machine is not able to see the tip or it's intermittent. Sometimes it does see the tip, sometimes it does not see it. Another concern is the plastic piece on back here. Another concern is solder not sticking onto the tip. Right now I cannot even get that tip to work. It's giving me that exclamation mark. Let's try this again. Yeah, I'm not able to use that tip. So what happens when somebody purchased this from us and then the tip stops working after a few days, after two days, after one week? or it's intermittent. Sometimes it does work, sometimes it does not work. The machine is going to come back to us. They're going to return the machine and we cannot have that. So what do I think about this station? To be honest with you, I have mixed feelings. The station is not a high-end device, but it performs like a high-end device. It performs just like my Waller station that costs $1,200. I did not see any difference. I love the way the handle feels in the hand, the distance between the tip and where I hold the handle is minimal and that's very important because you do not want a handle that looks like this where you hold it from here and you have all that distance you're not going to be able to do precision work so right now if I hold the pen from here I would say the distance is maybe one inch one inch and a half to the tip and that's amazing just like my weather tip and the size of the handle is like the weller tip, except for maybe the bottom, but I do not care about this part. I care about the distance from here to here. And it's a winner. So I do love the machine. Now, like I said, I have a few concerns. The plastic piece is a huge concern. The tip not being detected or an intermittent issue with the tip being detected is a turn off. I already told I2C about the problem and we are communicating. If I2C can address those issues, then I can sell this knowing that we are selling a good soldering station. If you use this machine in the past, let me know what you like and what you do not like about this machine. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.